What's up, guys? Hey, let me share some thoughts with you from John 17. Actually, the last verse of John 16, Jesus says this to his disciples. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. So I know a lot of people right now are not freaked out about the virus. They're freaked out about the economic implications of, you know, having to be sent home from work. Uh, businesses may be closing depending on how long this thing lasts. I mean, paychecks are getting eaten up, right? So we are going to experience tribulation in this world. And Jesus called it. And he said, but take courage. I have overcome the world. And John was in that group of people that he spoke to who wrote later in 1 John, this is the victory that has overcome the world. It is our faith. So you put all this together and you just realize like, yeah, this world has got some messed up stuff going on, but Jesus has us here on purpose. And through faith, we actually wind up overcoming all of this. So in John 17, he turns his attention and he starts talking to not his disciples, but talking to his father in heaven. And down in verse um, 15, he prays this right before he goes to the cross. He says to his father, to God the Father, I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. So isn't that interesting? Jesus actually wants us in the middle of difficult times. He wants us in the struggle. It's not that he gets kicks out of it when we do struggle, but he has purposes for us and wants us not to be withdrawn from the struggle of this earth, but to in fact be in the middle of it and engage. So he keeps going. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Which by the way, guys, that's the reason that this world feels uncomfortable for us, we're foreigners. The word Hebrew means wanderer, and God's people from the beginning have been identified ever since Abraham as Hebrews, as wanderers. Now we are called in the New Testament, in 1 Peter 1, exiles and things like that. Like we just, we don't quite fit here. And so this place is gonna be uncomfortable. There's gonna be trouble. We are not of the world. So he keeps praying, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. How do we engage the troubles of this world? We dig into the truth of God. We dig into the word of God. We devour, we feed on and nourish ourselves on the Bible. And if you've got extra time right now that you would not have chosen to have for yourself, whether you're a, a, a kid that's home from school or somebody that's home from work, then we know exactly the means of grace that God has put in our lives to be sanctified and to engage these troubles. And it is to engage in the word of God. So read, read our Bibles is what he's saying there. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they may themselves also be sanctified in the truth. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, meaning the 12 or 11 at that point who were with him. He says, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So he's praying for people who would come to Christ through the words of the apostles, meaning people who would believe the message of the New Testament. That's us. So Jesus is praying for us here as we engage in the troubles of the world. What's he praying for? That they may all be one, even as, as you, Father, are in me and I am in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. So our unity in this time, we gather around the word, in a lot of cases, digitally right now, <laughs> you know, we gather in, in prayer and we are all in Christ. And so we are together and Christ is wrapped up in God. The father is in fact, one nature with him. And so God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy spirit, that's, that's our one God in three persons. And God looks at us and says, come on in here and have unity and communion with me and all of this multifaceted, multi-layered glory. It's a beautiful thing. So we will have trouble in the world. But take heart, Jesus has overcome the world. Through faith, we participate in that victory and that overcoming of the world. And we do so in unity around the word of God and in Christ himself. This is actually a, a passage that, uh, that should be at the foundation of any trouble that we face together. And right now, whether it's financial troubles or some people are you know, ill and probably more people are going to get sick, you know, these troubles that we have to face together, we do so in unity as one. Right? Because we're not of the world, but we got that in common, you and me, and Jesus. So keep praying for the church. Keep praying for the bride of Christ that uh, the church would be sanctified. In the, and I don't just mean grace and truth. I mean like the global church. 
that, it, that we would be sanctified in the truth, that we would be made holy, and that everything that we go through together would be um, would have the result of making us more like Christ in a way that we weren't before. I think he's doing a lot of good work. All right, guys.